Hello and welcome to our latest unboxing video. I'm Eliza here at the Hatfield Public Library with a box of kids books. Um, there are a lot of them in here, which is awesome. And I'm going to also try to go through them pretty quickly. We have A Horse Named Sky by Roseanne Perry, author of A Wolf Called Wander. Yes, it is like a tale is told as time. Kids love horse books. I love that this is like a nice, accessible paperback. Gorgeous cover. Should be fun. We have The Last Hope School for Magical Delinquents. Oh, I just got that. The Last Hope School for Magical Delinquents by Nikki Pau Prito. So it sounds like these are some kids who are not fitting in everywhere, out of control and out of options. Oh my gosh. I like this sort of twist on a magical school story. That sounds fun. Um, the Everybody Experiment by Ramey. Oh, it's, it's hard. Her name kind of got blocked by the barcode. Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you the author's name. Lisa Moore Ramey. And 11-year-old Kylie's friends have seemed so much more mature than she is. She has middle school coming. And so she tries to apply her scientific brain to solve the problem. Um, uh, what, so she decides whenever her friends do something, she's going to do it too. It's called the everybody experiment. I also love that as a premise. And it's like such a classic take on like, well, if your friends jumped off a cliff, but if you're trying to fit in, like, what are you going to do? The house on Yeet street by Preston Norton. Uh, what if you accidentally spilled your biggest secret to a ghost? Oh, he, oh, <laughs> So it's funny because it actually uses the word yeet, like kids use the word yeet, which is like to throw something. Um, so he yeets his secret notebook into a house on Yeet Street. Um, but it's um he because he was trying to get rid of his feelings, but then his friends plan a sleepover at the haunted house, and it turns out there is a ghost who read his secrets. These are amazing. All of these premises are knocking it out of the park. We have a strange thing happened in Cherry Hall. Um and this also the author got blocked, Jasmine Warga. A painting has been stolen. Rami sees a floating girl in the museum. He knows he has seen her somewhere before. She's the girl in the painting that has gone missing. Mystery. The cat. Oh, whoops. Picture book? Well, I guess. Uh, wait, wait. I'm going to wait for the picture book and see if I can get through the rest of the chapter books. There's Onks and Beyond uh, by Amber McBride. Oh, my gosh. That looks sad. It ha uh, The boy has wings. Um, he dreams of flying, but faces the challenge of keeping his home life together while avoiding discovery by child protective services. So it definitely sounds like a little darker. Um, I did worry when I saw the wings, I worried he passed away, but it sounds like that's not, that's not what's happening. Um, Amari and the Despicable Wonders, the newest in the very popular Amari series by B.B. Alston. Um... Warrior has come to the supernatural world and Amari's two worst enemies are leading the charge. This is a really fun series. I really recommend starting from the beginning and getting into it. Um, oh, we have, a, we have a few parenting books mixed in. Sorry, they're not together, but this is the Bonus Family Handbook. It's a definitive guide to co-parenting and creating stronger families with Jane Blackston PSD. So I think this is specifically for like blended, blended families, which is great. We have Until the Streetlights Come On. Oh, okay. So this is another parenting book. It says, How a Return to Play Brightens Our Present and Prepares Kids for an Uncertain Future by Ginny Urich, M.E.D. Um, and I think this is, whoa, what's going on? Um, that's not what I expected. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay. So it basically says that, <laughs> oh, <laughs> It says the average American spends four to seven minutes outside each day while we spend four to seven hours using devices with screens. Oh my gosh, this is, makes me want to uh, pick up my kids from school and immediately just be like, okay, we're playing outside. Um, 
The Screen Time Solution, speaking of which, A Judgment-Free Guide to Becoming a Tech Intentional Family by Emily Shirkin, M.E.D. So another one looking at, um, and again, as a parent, I am like so, and I love the idea that it's a judgment-free guide because it's just like, it's a different world. Devices are everywhere. Half of the things that they like want to do are like, oh, they're using the device, but like just, oh, anyways. Beginner's Baby Sign Language, Sign and Sing at Home. Very fun, very cute, written by Sarah Bingham. I thought we had a baby sign language book, but I think it must have like disappeared over the years. But that is even more fun because it means we get a new one. <laughs> Okay, now onto the picture books. We have The Cafe at the Edge of the Woods by Mickey, please. Um, very uh, sort of, um, I don't know, intriguing cover. Can you, because you can see there's one human and one sort of goblin figure. It says, with the help of a newfound waiter, Glumfoot, Renee is ready to serve gourmet meals, but the locals have peculiar appetites and request disgusting things. Huh. The Challenges of Opening a Restaurant. We have King Lion by Emma Tarlett. Oh my gosh. Um, so in this one, King Lion wants a friend, but the only way he knows how to make friends is to roar. Oh my goodness. Learning to make friends, roaring, definitely not, not always the way to go. Not usually the way to go. The most boring book ever. This one is written by Brandon Sanderson, who's a really like big epic fantasy author. Um, and it's illustrated by um, Kazu Kibuyushi, who's a super popular uh, graphic novel kids writer. So um, such a power team. That's like a crazy level of power team. And um, I'm looking forward to it. It's gotten good reviews. And they, again, both very, very skilled uh, narrators. Skilled storytellers. It is okay by Yi Guao. I like this very sort of simple, like almost stick figure esque drawing. Um, so it's about two best friends, um, but they realize they aren't as similar as they think they are, and they have to accept each other's differences. Noodles on a Bicycle by Kiao McClear and Gracie Zhang. So. I like this. I, I like most of the styles of illustration, but I do like this one. Um, so they are soba delivery men who set out each morning to deliver the noodles. Oh, and this is their story and all the things they have to go through. That is great. Ooh, what's happening? Uh, it says they're artists, architects, tough talkers. <laughs> they got to do a lot of different things to deliver the noodles. Okay, on to a new phase. We have over the years, we, we've always had I Spy and Where's Waldo books, but a lot of them like have gone missing and stuff like that. So we are replacing them. So I'm just going through rapidly. We have Where's Waldo, The Fantastic Journey. We have I Spy Spooky Night, I Spy Treasure Hunts. Pablo gets the grumps. Oops, this is a picture book that was just mixed up with them. So back to picture books. Natalia Shallow Chivoli. Oh my gosh, just take a moment to appreciate the cuteness of that cover. Um, I just love it. I don't even care what the book is about. Um, today just isn't Pablo's day. Oh, it says that his mom is trying to get him to do different things and he doesn't want to do any of them. My kids have days like that. Uh, back, sorry, back to search and find. I spy a book of picture riddles. Another Where's Waldo? The Ma Mighty Magical Mix-Up. Um, oh, and then that's it for I Spy. We have a few more picture books. Um, I thought we were getting more of those, so there must be more maybe on their way. This is the Giant and the Grizzly Bear by Rosemary of Rianya Miak. And illustrated by Thamiris Parides, it's a traditional story from the Westing, Western Arctic about um, a kind giant, giant who adopts a human boy, and he's supposed to watch the grizzly bears while he sleeps. Um, oh my gosh. 
How is the boy spell supposed to watch the grizzly bears? They're so big. Mr. Fox's Game of No by David LaRochelle and illustrated by Mike Wolnoka. It says they both won the Theater uh, Seuss Geisel Award. And, oh, it's you have to beat Mr. Fox in his game of no. Oh, you're supposed to say no to everything Mr. Fox offers. I love that. I love interactive picture books. I've just been reading Poof, Ploof, Ploof with my, with my son, which we didn't have at the library, but I'm going to get it. And it's so much fun. I love the interactive ones. Um, they call me teach lessons in freedom. So a little more on the serious side, um, written by Lessa Klein Ransom, Coretta Scott King Award honoree, and another uh, medalist, James E. Ransom. And this is about the young man named Teach who's secretly educating uh, other people on how to read and write. Beautiful watercolor illustrations. Last book, The Bedtime Boat. Oh, my books are going to fall. I have a big uh, unbalanced pile. The Bedtime Boat by Sital Gorasia Chapman and Anastasia Sovarafa. Um, just gorgeous colors. I love the use of color. And it looks so, like, imaginative and intriguing. Um, oh, it says vanish bedtime battles using proven mindfulness techniques. So I guess this just isn't a random book. You're actually, like, using secret powers to get your kids to go to sleep. <laughs> to try that. Usually we just read a lot about dinosaurs, but um, I like this idea of mindfulness techniques. So um, that was it. That was my big pile that's not going to fall over. And this is my empty box, and we will get all of those on the shelf.